Do you hope as the voice of Amy that, mm -hmm. you know, eventually she'll convince Sonic to uh, <gasps> date in the end? Listen. Think it'll ever happen? Well, now that, now that he looks like himself again, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Before we'll he would have been busy? Uh, well, yeah, yeah, I would have been like, you know, that's all right. But, um, sure, sure, take a look at him now, we'll see. Um, but yeah, that would always be fun. It would be fun, I mean, you know, you had a lot to learn. They had growing pains, like every relationship does. When it comes to voicing Amy, yes. how different is it, you know, to record for the video game, like the video game lineup as opposed to the cartoon? Um, when we had done that, the animation at the time, you just had the director and maybe the engineer in your room. And when we had recorded the video games for that, there were oftentimes a lot of producers in the room. There was, uh, at one point, they had, I think, the most amount of people we had, and there was about six, six or seven, I think, of people, so they would bring them in. So that's a little bit different. Um, also, the stuff that we had done for the show was all ADR, and much of the video game stuff, it's different. Sometimes you're doing it pre-lay, so it's not, you know, you're not seeing the picture. Sometimes you have some animation, but they don't necessarily have the mouths done yet. So that was the kind of stuff. But the main thing was that there were other people in the room, and you're, you're doing the lines as opposed to doing them visually to the whole story. You're usually doing sometimes the banks for games. It's, it's like any other game, you'll do the bank for the games and you'll do, you'll do that and, and some scene work. So that was the difference though, is that there was a lot of a lot more people in the room. You got your start because your brother stole your car? My brother stole my car. So I had, I was in school and I had to take a semester off because I got mono very badly. Yeah, exactly, everybody can relate to that. Uh, my car also got mono and it wouldn't start. So <laughs> we used to hang the keys on the hook over by the thing. My brother came one day, he took the keys, took my car, dropped it off somewhere. I come wake up, my car is gone, and I get a phone call, it's my brother. I'm like, hey, where's my car? He's like, it's at George's house. And I'm like, who's George? And then he hangs up. So um, I wound up having to, ch yeah, no, exactly. Listen, my other brother became a cop, so it all balances out in the end. But um, so I wound up chasing after this, uh, trying to figure out another friend, Rob, called up. He came to pick me up. And I'm like, do you know who George is? He's like, yeah, sure, no problem. I'll take you to George's house. So get in the car with him. And he turned out to be interning at a company that was called Central Park Media. So um, we started talking. We're going through. I was studying theater at the time. Yep, CPM, great. And I was studying theater at the time. And he started talking to me. And he said, um, listen, they asked me to bring in some people. Do you know anybody who might want to, you know, I don't know, do some voices for anime? I was like, how about me? <laughs> So um, we did do that, I did get my car back, we did get a car battery, you did all that, and uh, I went in to audition for a show called Record of Lotus War, and um, yes, and I wound up actually booking the role of Deedlet. So that was my first audition, my first gig, so yes, my brother stole my car, I don't recommend it for everyone, and most siblings will not approve of that. But like I said, my other brother became a cop and the world got balanced. So. Were you nervous at all going in? Or? I was, you know, I didn't know what to expect. I was nervous. It was really weird. I was nervous during my first, uh, my first sessions too. Um, going in, I did. I've told people this before. I had watched anime. I watched cartoons. Is what I grew up watching, and I sort of went in and did my best, like Disney voice. This is my thing because I used to practice that in the car, um, <laughs> and that's what wound up happening. But during our first sessions, I. Um, I was so nervous I wouldn't take a lunch break when we had long days. I was afraid to go to the bathroom. I didn't do anything. I was like, I just, I just, I was so excited to just have the job that I, people would say, hey, do you want to take a break? And now I realize that everybody, if they're like, take a break, they want to take a break, they want to have a sandwich. I was like, oh no, that's okay. I can keep working. I can keep going through. It's totally fine. Um, and uh, actually, the um, one of the first directors of it, a man named Michael Alvin, um, he's since uh, he since passed away, but he was one there with him. I still work with um, Joe DiGiorgio over at Headline Sounds, who worked with me as well. Um, he he knew me since because I was I was really young when I started off, and uh, he told me he's like it's so funny seeing you when you started. You were so shy and so like just like nervous and scared, and then like now, you know, the last time that I seen him, he was like you you sort of like blossomed in the whole thing. But yeah. Oh, I was so, I was super nervous. I was, not while I was doing it because I was having too much fun, but like being in the room and having all those people and everything, I was, it was, it was my first, that was my first paid job. My first paid job as an actor was saying, and my first words that I ever say was, 
Ew, it's moldy in here. <laughs> and thus launched my career. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any rituals to, you know, kind of reach an equilibrium before you go into a studio session and that you do every day or you can't go um, on? It depends. I, I do also because I, I, I now I'm at the point I teach voiceover and I do stuff like that as well, but um, it depends on the voice. Normally I'll do vocal warm-ups. Um, I do stretch out my body and do that. Um, sometimes you'll just go in and you're sort of ready, but I'm a singer also. So I'll sing, I'll do, I'll do sort of like my kind of things. I'm not going to do them now because go home and sing. But yeah, I do. <laughs> I sing, I sing a lot. I'll sing a lot beforehand before I go in and, uh, and I'll warm up my voice. But that's, but those are most of the things. And I also, some people bring in, if you have like sticky, bring in apples, apple cider vinegar. I have slippery elm tea. Like there's a whole litany of things that I'll do. And I try to get as much sleep as I possibly can because that's the one thing. Also, I just like sleeping. It's fun. You mentioned you teach voice acting now. Yes, I do. But that's surreal uh, for you? Um, well, not anymore because since I've been directing so long and doing this, it was stepping into it. Uh, I, if I look back and think about it, like the me who was over there looking back would probably have been like, that's insane, that's trippy. Um, but I started teaching a couple of years ago. I actually also teach a master class. I do, I'm a guest artist at NYU, so I teach there as well. I teach dubbing. Um, Fish? Um, yeah, in Stone Street actually. Oh. So, um, and I do a workshop with a fellow voice actor and voice coach Erica Schroeder, who uh, has played a whole bunch of things. She was the Luffy to my um, to my Chopper, and she's also and she was Blaze and a bunch of other things. So she and I teach with another woman named Jen Sukup, who is the casting director who cast out the most recent Transformers out in New York. So we workshop on that. We teach character creation, doing your voices, uh, and then I and then I do a dubbing segment at the end. I also taught in um, Korea. Uh, I do I also do a class that is about a vocal preservation and making your making voices and your sound for also people because there's a lot of screaming that we do. So it's about finding finding the places in your palate and things that make sound that you don't realize and also how to support and use your voice in a way that you're not going to damage it because I do and I, I use that in the booth a lot because we'll have I know someone's knocking but like we'll have matches like for we just got we're doing the league you know we've been doing the league the league the Alola league just started airing um, the weekend before last they did 151 and this week they had their first rounds um, People screaming in there for hours. Like, I do not go easy on these people. I will tell you, like, they'll do something. I'm like, yeah, no, 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 no. I'm like, you're way more excited than that. I'm like, you're, I'm like, you're about to win this game. Go for this, you know. So I, so they, so they give it all out. But people are screaming, so we make sure that we can support. You can. That's part of the craft. You're doing the thing. You're doing your performance, but you want to make sure that you can support the voice. You can do it, and that. I work with a lot of people who are on Broadway, who are who have done stuff before. Um, Gladion, who plays uh, Eddie Lee, who plays Gladion, he um, just went on as Hamilton recently. Um, one of our other guys, um, uh, the Professor Kakui, is in Beetlejuice. Like these guys are performing all the time, so they have hours and hours and hours of stuff in the booth, and then outside of the booth, so they get vocal fatigue. So that's one of the things that's important. So that's I teach people not just the character creation on that but also how to support their instrument and do that so that they're able to perform there, do it well, and then also still do all the other work that we have to do as actors. I went to NYU. What? I you, went to NYU. You went to NYU? Awesome. Yeah. Cheers, cheers. How do you protect your voice generally? You mentioned the screams before mm -hmm. with your students. Uh, I make sure I warm up beforehand when I do that. I still work with a voice coach myself. I have my mentor is a woman named Diane Towser who um, she works with me. She had, or Pavarotti did a whole bunch of stuff, but I still practice. I still do that. I still work out my body. Um, I drink a lot of water. I always sleep with a humidifier, especially in New York. We get a lot of dry. It get, you guys know, it's dry. It's real dry, especially with the steam heat. Um, but um, I'll try to get rest whenever I do things. I do um, in the booth, like I said, throat coat, um, lemon and honey tea. Uh, try not to, don't have any aspirin when you're just having the thing that's there. You have apples, you just try and take as, as good care of your voice as you can. But um, if I have rougher days, I definitely make sure that I warm up and do the, do the throat coat and like warm up the body as well. Yeah. 